COG family, Pastor Fallon here with another devotion for the day. Uh, today I want to talk about allowing Holy Spirit to govern your focus. We live in a world where people pay big money to grab our attention. We know this. And if they can get even five minutes of our attention, they have gained valuable time from us. Our mission statement at Crystal River Church of God is to find focus for living by focusing on God, on others, and on ministry. So I think what's important to point out is that focus is an action. It's a decision that we have to make. So we have to be intentional with our focus because if not, then so many other things could grab our attention and you know, essentially waste our time. So we have to be intentional on what we focus on. When we allow other people, Hollywood, media, our jobs, take all of our attention and time, then we begin to feel weary. Weary. Um, we wonder why we're so tired and frustrated. Sometimes, not that we won't have downtime and family time and focus on others, we wanna do that, but we wanna make sure that we give God some of our attention or at least most of our attention, really. And this is what, where I get this from, because if you look in 1 Thessalonians, you'll see, I think this is the reason why God says to pray without ceasing. Now, does that, that doesn't mean that you don't focus on your family, that you don't uh, do your job well and focus on that and pay attention to relationships and uh, learning and schooling and all that. That's all things that God has given us that are very valuable as well. But what the Lord is saying is to not forget to make an effort to not go too long without acknowledging God in our day on a daily basis. And when we do this, when we acknowledge Him in what we do, and when we allow Him to be a part of everything that we do on a daily basis, then we are able to reset our focus. Because I don't know about you, there's so much negativity in this world that if we get caught up in it too much, it can just weigh us down. But when we can say, God, I give this to you and I trust you, it helps us to reset our focus and gives us strength for the day. Um, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that when we seek God first, that all of the things that we need will be added to us. So that's what he's saying here. And I believe God is saying, um, just kind of giving us a picture of where he should be positioned in our lives. And that's first place. You know, he didn't send his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins just to be added to our lives, but he sent him to give us a new beginning, a new life, because he knows that um, he has abundant life for us and an eternal home in heaven for us. And what he has to offer is so much better than what we can try to come up with on our own. So when Matthew 6, is saying, seek God first, that's a way of living. Um, he's pointing us to a way of living with him. Because I don't know about you, but my life before Jesus is crazy, nothing compared to the wonderful life that is with him in it. So um, let, let's just focus on allowing God to be a part of every single thing that we do and everything and all our goals in life. Keeping our focus on the Lord makes us successful on the earth. I want to mention Paul as an example of focus uh, today. And I want us to look at the book of Philippians. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the book of Philippians is actually a letter to the church of Philippi. And Paul wrote this letter to them in a prison cell. So he had shackles on him in a prison cell writing to the church of Philippi, thinking and focusing on others, focusing on the kingdom of God in the midst of his struggle. Talk about focus here. Paul is an example. He was arrested for preaching the gospel. Just think if you were in his shoes, being arrested for doing something good. You weren't even guilty of wrong in any way, but you were arrested for doing something good. Just think about what you would focus on and what you would do. You would try to find someone you can call to get you out of there. That's what I would do. I'd be like, who can I call to get me out of here, bail me out? But what did Paul do? Paul saw this as an opportunity to share the gospel more because of his focus on the Lord. 
what the enemy tries to throw at you to set you back could actually be the best thing for you, the best thing to happen to you. And I know that's crazy. And I know you're like, well, I don't want the enemy to throw anything at me. No one does. But when we are children of God, we're not exempt from the enemy's schemes. But you can rest assured that God is your great defender and he will protect you no matter what situation you're in. Here's what Paul told the church of Philippi in Philippians chapter 1 verse 14. He said, what I'm going through has actually caused many believers to become even more courageous in the Lord and to be bold and passionate to preach the word of God all because of my chains. Wow. Let's just let that sink in for a moment. Like, okay. While he was chained up, he chose to focus on God and allow him to continue to govern his life, even in a difficult situation. And because he did that, God was able to do even greater things through him. That is the power of focus. And it's not easy but God gives us the grace to do that as we build relationship with him, as we spend time with him in prayer and fasting and reading his word, as we grow relationship with him, we are able to focus on him. And he gives us the grace to do that despite the many distractions of life. And, and this, is, this is what um, Paul tells me in this story, that the enemy's efforts to stop us as children of God will only accelerate our pace of influence in the kingdom of God if we stay focused on him, focused on the Lord. That's what Paul's story tells me. So there is no situation, family, that you find yourself in that God can't help you out of. And more importantly, there's no situation that you're in that God doesn't care about. You can't find anyone else on this earth who cares more about you and your situation than God than your heavenly Father and your loving Savior. I want to leave you uh, with some of Paul's words today. And it's in Philippians 3, 12 through 16. And here's what he says here. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this victory prize, following one path with one passion. I want to encourage you today to ask God to help you develop steadfast focus on Him. This is not an easy task. This is something that is developed through relationship and through effort on a daily basis. And I'm coming to you from a point of conviction as well to say, God, help me to focus on you more when distractions come, when the enemy tries to discourage me. Help me, God, to just lay it all down at your feet and say, help me. Help me to stay focused on you, God, despite other things that are coming towards me. And so I'm not coming to you from a place of arrival, but it's something that is matured and developed through time and dependency and trust on the Lord. So my prayer for you today is that you will stay steadfast on the Lord despite your situation, whether you're in a Paul type situation or whether you're on a mountain top. I pray and encourage you to allow God to have a part of every day of your life. Let him be a part of every decision you make, of everything that you do, everything that you plan, and let him be the focus of your life.